Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back again with another video in line with the, the ones that I've been posting recently about the end times and the sequence of events. I'm just going through the prophetic books in the Old Testament and um, I'm on Joel and just thought I would do a quick summary of this um, short book, but very, very important. Um, has um, many things to say about uh, the end times and, uh, you know, I would say... Uh, a very encouraging uh, word as well, uh, because it speaks of uh, things that people can do to prepare uh, for what's described here as the day of the Lord. And so uh, no no surprise, it's the same narrative that um, I've shared in um, Zechariah, Malachi, Daniel, Revelation, Ezra, Matthew, and all that kind of stuff. So no surprise here, the Bible is consistent. Uh, it may use different language, code, symbols, and all that, but uh, we're getting a, a consistent narrative here in the book of Joel as well. And uh, this chapter is titled The Day of the Lord. Um, Blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the, of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. And so um, it's the, the position that we are in for people who read the Bible and then correlate it to the times that we live in. It doesn't look like it's getting better. Um, it's just the reality of it. Um, but um, in this book, it also gives us hope as to why this is all happening. This is a good message that I'll read before I get into the sequence. Um, Joel 2.12, Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. And so again, this is um, God, the Lord, speaking through Joel reminding us that that is all that we could really do in these days is come back to God like the prodigal son. Um, really, all of us are experiencing that is go back to God, you know, with a humble heart. And um, there's nothing material that we can offer him because, again, we know in the days, especially now, that everything is God's. And so it's giving us an encouragement and really um, instruction uh, like in verse 13, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. And so um, this is a good message, you know, and um, I'm very thankful that God does this, you know, puts this in place before he goes in and describes the destruction because it gives us some sense of what we should be doing in these times. And so um, returning to God with our, our whole heart, fasting, weeping, with mourning, and um, there's nothing material we can offer God. We can't offer him a garment. We can't offer him um, any other sacrifice in the days that we live in now, but just um, exclusive worship. And so I'm just going to go down to focus on the sequence of events. And so um, it straddles two, two chapters, but it begins here. Uh, the Lord will pour out his spirit, verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And so God is doing this at an individual level. Um, we have to believe that. It's not any kind of corporate structure or group, alphabet soup group that's doing any of this. God is doing this on an individual level, and I suspect it's happening, has been happening for a while, and it will certainly intensify. And anything that involves truth, involves God. And so the awakening that I believe is happening every day is um, fulfilling verse 28 and God pouring out his spirit on all flesh. And so God's spirit can either be from his left and right hand side. And so expect all of this to intensify, expect the right hand side to um, strengthen, you know, in, in their resolve, you know, to turn back to God, like I read earlier, and then expect the spirits from his left hand side as well um, to intensify. And so this works for both sides. God is the author of good and evil, and he has architected and instructed every single spirit that exists um, to do his will. All right, so moving on to the actual sequence of events. Verse 30, And I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord. That's referring to um, eclipses. Uh, blood moons and all that. And we see that that happens regularly throughout human history. And so God uses those as signs, even if we don't know exactly what it means to trigger certain events. And so we have seen that happen. It shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls again. This is always comes first, you know, and I sound like a broken record, but this is the way it is. And again, it makes sense that there's always salvation first. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's going to be a, a group of people that will be seeking salvation, you know, regularly. And so um, uh, then what uh, happens, and this is consistent with other books that I've um, went through, that group is taken to Israel, you know, in the Middle East, and they are, God's elect are there waiting um, for this uh, uh, final war, this wrath, where the people of the earth who will then be microchipped will then have the audacity to fight against God. And so that's what happens. Um, and that's what it says here. For in Mount Zion in Jerusalem, there shall be those who escape. And so God is going to take those people that are, quote, escaping, and uh, they will be brought you know, to Mount Zion and in Jerusalem. Um, it's referred to as Jehoshaphat, um, Megiddo, Armageddon. It's all referring to uh, the final battle that's going to happen in the Middle East. Um, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. And so there will be, again, a group that does not die. And um, they will be, quote, unquote, raptured, pre-plague, pre-tribulation rapture, however you describe it. And then um, they will be brought over and um, join the army that will be fighting against those who have the mark of the beast. And so after this happens, in between that time, there will be again, uh, that will be the thing that will motivate this event. That will be the thing that will motivate forcing the mark of the beast. And then after that is passed, um, it says here in Joel 3, the Lord judges the nations. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Again, this is all nations. This is a worldwide, quote, one world government, God's left-hand side, the mark of the beast, um, chipped. However, all those things are consistent at this point. All the nations and bring them to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I'll enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my heritage, Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land and have cast lots for my people and have traded a boy for a prostitute and have sold a girl for wine and have drunk it. And so we have seen the kind of commerce that's going on in the world. This is what's going on, you know, and so people are being sold um, into slavery. Um, a human life has no value. A human soul doesn't even get talked about, much less have value. And um, just for a prostitute and for drinks, I would, that's probably the best way to summarize all the goings on on earth right now is that people are leveraging other people and even young people uh, just simply for a prostitute, for a moment of sexual pleasure and for drinks, you know, in a moment of drunkenness. And so that is, again, no better way to characterize the commerce that's going on on earth right now. Moving on to verse four. What are you to me, O Tyre and Sidon and all the regions of Philistia? Are you paying me back for something? If you are paying me back, I will turn your payment with your own head swiftly and speedily. For you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried my rich treasures into your temples. You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks in order to remove them far from their border. Behold, I will stir them up from the place to which you have sold them and I will return your payment on your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, to a nation far away, for the Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Consecrate for war. Stir up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am a warrior. Hasten and come, all you surrounding nations, and gather yourselves there. Bring down your warriors, O Lord. Let the nations stir themselves up and come to the valley of Jehoshaphat, where I will... For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Pick, put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Go in and tread, for the wine press is full. The vats overflow, for their evil is great. Multitudes, multitudes, in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth quake, but the Lord is a refuge to his people, a stronghold to the people of Israel. And so we can see here that um, that is the future. And so again, that is the wrath of God. That is God literally just cleaning up the entire earth um, in Armageddon, Megiddo, 
Jehoshaphat, Valley of Decision, um, the Wrath of God, all those different terms. And then now it's the, uh, the kingdom of heaven. And so after that is done, God will establish his kingdom on earth. And uh, again, it's in the same sequence. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God who dwells in Zion, my holy mountain, and Jerusalem shall be holy, and strangers shall never pass through it. And in that day the mountains shall drip sweet wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the stream beds of Judah shall flow with water, and a fountain shall come from the house of the Lord, and water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall become a desolation. That's referring to America uh, and in, in the end times. And Edom, a desolate wilderness, that represents the leadership of America. For the violence done to the people of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land, but Judah shall be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem to all generations. I will avenge their blood. Blood I have not avenged, for the Lord dwells in Zion. And so it's always the same sequence of events. It's just um, reiterated here in, um, in a different way in the book of Joel, but it's the same thing. God's elect, God's people are taken away. Um, there is a tribulation period where the mark of the beast um, is meant to test people and really to identify God's left-hand side as a one-world government. And then um, God will focus his, um, his wrath in the Middle East and begin there. And he will literally meet them there, uh, those people that are on the earth on God's left-hand side. And um, they'll have the audacity to fight against God. Um, but that's where he will be doing his final cleanup, um, the slaughtering of everybody. And um, that will be his final judgment on earth. And then um, like it's written here, uh, the glorious future of Judah, God will establish his kingdom on earth. <clears throat> and so we're reminded here and again, really in all places that for the day of the Lord is near. And this is back in Joel's time that they were saying this. So obviously we're closer now, uh, every day that passes, if the God of the Bible is real. And um, this is what uh, the future holds. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.